Welcome to the third and last video of the Bellflower set. Maybe you remember this, I showed you this in the last video. And I promised you I would tell you how I made the petticoat and the blouse. So I'm going to do that now. But let's start at the beginning, shall we? So here we are, it all started with this blouse I bought second hand and I wanted to make a folk blouse inspired by this one, <laughs> by Lena Hoshek. And I bought it a few sizes too big, but I did that on purpose. And here I'm trying it on, hoping that it would already look good, but it didn't, of course it didn't. So. I measured how much I would have to take out in the sides. First I measured it, then I put it on, then I measured again. And when I was satisfied with the result, I first took out the sleeves so I could work better with the piece. And that took forever <laughs> because the stitches were so tiny, it was so well um, overlocked. But after I was done with that and I had taken out the sleeves, I sewed the sides close so I made it smaller about, I think it was like 10 centimeters. I know that's a lot, but I wanted the blouse to be oversized for me so I would have some material to work with in case I wanted to make the sleeves bigger or add some special details. And then it fit well in the sides, but it was still punchy at the top when I put the bodice on. So, so I added some darts. I was eyeballing that, um, but it turned out well in the end. So the darts I first sewed with simple stretch stitches to secure it down. And then I went over it again with back stitches. I sewed all of this by hand because I like hand sewing, but also because I was so scared. I'm always so scared to sew um, darts by machine because you don't have that much control. And I think they turned out really well and they're almost symmetrical. I think they are symmetrical, but don't worry, nobody will see them, so it's fine. And then I pressed everything into place so it would lay nice and flat. And the top also needed some pressing because it was so wrinkly. And then I marked where the sleeves would sit. And I marked this like six times because I was so insecure where to put it. And I was so scared. In the end, I did. <laughs> In the end, I did decide on a spot where I wanted to cut it off. But... It took forever and I was so scared. Can you see how I'm shaking? I'm so nervous. Oh my God, I was so scared to mess this up. And in the end, I could have cut off more. Of course I could have, but it's okay. It's fine, it looks good. And I'm proud of myself <laughs> for getting over my fear. After that I put in the sleeve 
and I didn't change the size of the sleeves because I wanted to gather it at top to make a puffy sleeve, like yeah, some kind of a puffy sleeve. I pinned it into a specific point and then I gathered the rest at the top. After that I went over everything with running stitches just to secure it down and then I tried it on and then I questioned myself again yeah and then <laughs> after I questioned myself for three days I was just like let's just sew this in and I went over it again with um, back stitches yeah and that's uh, the top done so let's let's before we start on the skirt let's just take a break let's look at some cats let's come down Okay, okay, enough with the cats. Let's get back to shopping. So for the skirt, I wanted something cheap, something that's almost already done. So I went on Vinted and I looked for white skirts, maxi skirts um, in my size. And I wanted it to cost no more than five euros. So I wanted something that was layered uh, like this one and I wanted cotton and I wanted it to be stiff so that one didn't look stiff enough I don't know I wanted it to be stiff so it would make the skirt more poofy and I yeah so so that would look good because it was more stiffer it was cotton it had layers, it already had some kind of embroidery and I think it had most of the things I wanted to have so so I bought it and here it is, let's open it, let's try it on I want to see how it looks what do you think? I had my Victorian lady in the summer moment here <laughs> and I think the skirt is really good so it's too long obviously but that's okay I wanted it to be too long so I would have some material just in case I needed it and I like it it has the pleats it has the embroidery that I'm taking out probably but it looks good so of course I need it shorter and I use the bottom part so I would have the most poofiness possible. I measured from the bottom and then I cut it off. Obviously not where I marked but that's okay. <laughs> it turned out well in the end. I folded over the raw edge once and secured it with running stitches as you can see here and then I folded it over again to make the encasing for the string I wanted to put back in. This part I sewed down with back stitches. And watching these videos, I'm thinking, I'm thinking to myself, why did I not make the stitching tighter? It looks so weak. I could have made it tighter. So, note to myself for the future, please make your stitching tighter. It's so loose. <sighs> And then I put the string in back in the original one but I took off these beads that were at the end 
so let's fast forward to five months. <laughs> no. But I did make some changes in the meantime, so I didn't film it because it's winter and I don't have any sunlight. So yeah, but I will show you how I put in the lace at the top. First I sewed it down really close to the already existing panel and then I took this panel out. I don't know if that's the best way to do it but I prefer it that way so the material would stay where it belonged. So if I would have ripped out the backing first and then put in the lace I think it would have moved, moved too much and it would be too hard to work with. So, I am done. Let's see how it all looks together. This set was so much fun to make. But it took a long time, <laughs> I don't know why, it just took so long to make. I started working on it in April 2021 and now it's January Let's look at it side by side. I separated the top from the bottom to be able to wear separately. I put the ribbon on the bottom of the skirt and on the waistband. And then I finished the edge of the bodice, I changed out the buttons and I added embroidery. And of course I made the petticoat and the folk blouse. So making the whole set, it took a long time, almost a year. And I realized I really like making historical looking things, folk looking things out of second hand pieces. And I want to keep doing that because it's so much fun. If that sounds like something you would be interested to see, consider subscribing. I would love to have you on this journey with me. So see you soon. Bye.